Okay. Hi everyone, Mick Lubinskis here from She's Building a Robot, uh, and I'm lucky to be joined by Emma Costa, who is uh, in a cafe in Sydney, working very hard, being a hard-working entrepreneur, of course. Emma, great to chat to you. Thanks so much, Mick. Yeah, I'm sorry about, um, it. at least it's, um, who's that playing in the background? I can't remember now, but it's, it's good music, at least. Oh, good. Excellent. Oh, it's Grace Jones. Oh, how did I lose that? <laughs> Wow, of course. So can you tell me what you what you do? Sure. So I'm the founder of HelloCAS, which is an SMS chatbot that provides um, information and support pathways for people, or women generally who've experienced or are affected by family and sexual violence. Um, yeah, that's, that's my main gig at the moment. Well, that's a fantastic mission. Um, how long have you been doing that? And where, where is the organisation at now? Um, um, yeah, to start with. Yeah, so, well, we kicked off uh, two years ago, so 2017. I kind of quit my job and um, in, a, in a big e-commerce company and just went full-time uh, on HelloCast and kind of self-funded the first bit. I got a fellowship through the Maya Innovation Fund um, in Melbourne last year and we launched in May, just, just gone for Victoria. So I'm actually Melbourne-based um, for now, but yes, we launched it just eight weeks ago or so. Fantastic. So the chances of your coffee being excellent there is is very, very, very high. Um, and please don't feel compelled to answer this question, but um, was there a, a base motivation for you getting um, into this area and quitting what I'm sure was a, a more lucrative job to pursue a, a big passion? Uh, yeah, I don't know what would make you more lucrative. Yeah a big shift so I was working in search before I moved into this so I was kind of thinking about um, you know AI and um, recommend recommendation engines and that kind of thing so the the technology was kind of there um, but you know I've been a feminist since as long as I can remember and I was based in Berlin at the time and um, of an evening was doing some volunteer work in different refugee um, or emergency shelter Mm. It's camps, basically, but um, it was during the big uh, exodus out of Syria, so there's the refugee crisis, and um, family violence and sexual violence were two issues that I became really aware of. Like I've, I've always known about them in Australia being a challenge, but looking at that in the context of um, displaced communities um, and the, the kind of unique challenges that that kind of like a, a kind of impromptu settlement throws up. Um, I started thinking about chatbots as a way of negotiating or kind of lowering some of the barriers to getting support. And that's kind of where it started. Well, it's amazing. Can you, um, how's, how's the progress going so far? Um, it's, uh, it's, very, it's very much an MVP, technically speaking. Um, yeah. the, but certainly the biggest challenge has been kind of, you know, I ended up coming back to Australia to get it going because there was more of an opportunity for to get funding and, um, it was in English, <laughs> so it's a good place to start, my native tongue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like the technology is kind of the easy part in a big way. We don't use any, um, like there's no kind of super intelligence, there's no uh, machine learning or anything like that. It's very much, it's like a decision tree, basically. Yeah. Um, so because we had a data supply problem, I know it's, every, it's what everyone says, but um, yeah, certainly getting our heads around the policies, and the laws and the support services has been a big job. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, in the next wee while, at the end of August, we'll launch um, version 1.2. So we have web capabilities. At the moment, it's just SMS, but we'll have a web um, interface and also um, a WhatsApp API sorted once they let us in. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, we're getting there. Right. Okay. And, and, um, I want to go back to your, um, first experiences with technology. How did you first, you, you worked, said you worked in search for e-commerce company and you obviously know some things around the, the AI, et cetera. Um, how did you first get involved? Uh, was it a, a job, school, parents, friends? I actually did. Um, so I did. I graduated from university about 2004, four or five, four, I think, um, from in multimedia. So 
I kind of, the, the internet was a very different place back then, 15 years ago. And everything that I learnt was redundant within three years, I think. So it was like I was doing Flash and CD ROM authoring. Sorry, it's just, it's got a bit louder here. Um, so, yeah, I kind of, I started off in, I guess, more digital, having a kind of wanting to be like a digital creative and just journey through all sorts of different jobs and as they kind of were invented um, as the internet evolved. So that was kind of my journey in. I actually sometimes am like, how did I get here? Like, this is not what I thought I would do. I used to want to be, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a starving artist and live in Paris. So I got very close to that when I started CAS uh, and was living in Berlin. But anyway, that's, yeah. that's the journey. <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of parallels to the starting years of an uh, entrepreneur to, a, to an, an artist doing something for the love of it with the hope that there's going to be a future, uh, a big potential future. Um, so, look, it's a, it's a really, really uh, important mission you're doing. And I just want to say a massive thank you for that. It's something very, uh, both the feminine, feminist side and also the sexual uh, assault side um, is, is really personally important to me um, and so I appreciate all of your efforts in that I, I do hope that um, it can make a big difference and I, I think that there is um, I think there are huge impacts can, can be had um, a, a friend of mine um, dialed the um, suicide support line twice um, and and got a busy signal um, before he committed suicide um, and I, I think that there's um, so many more things we can be doing with the technology. Um, so even though you're at beta phase and it will take time and it, it's it's tough because there are real problems now, uh, I think that we have some amazing technical um, opportunities to, to solve some real human problems. So, um, yeah, c congratulations and keep going. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I love it when people say to keep going because honestly, you know, I'm part of an accelerated program now and whilst I appreciate experts and all these people who come in to offer advice, sometimes you just need to be told to keep going, you know, you can't know the minutiae of someone's business or product. So just, yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but thank you. Yeah, it is really tough and um, it, it's going to be harder because it's, it's um, unfortunately 95% of the money goes into financial driven products. Um, and the, the financial impacts of this are, are hidden and they're soft and they're very long term. Um, you know, it's not like just selling an e-commerce product. Um, it's very, very different numbers. But um, I think one of the potentials of, of that AI can, t can should bring to the world is the opportunities to work on more important things rather than just giving us more stuff, uh, making us wealthier and, uh, and those sort of things. So um, I think the timing, timing is, is, is really, really right. Um, tell us about how you're um, thinking about combining the technology, which, as you said, even at the moment being, um, I think I can imagine it'd be quite difficult to do. Um, what are the right questions to ask to take people in so many different contexts and service circumstances? Everyone personally very important. Um, and you want to give them like the, you know, a 20 year professional in front of them would obviously be very hard to, to, to beat. Uh, because there's a lot of empathy and understanding and what's that right first question to ask and how do you comfort them as well as guide them? How are you finding that challenge? Yeah, certainly by far the, the biggest piece of the puzzle was developing the content. So we kind of created a structure where it was um, to first um, encourage the user, so kind of commend them on getting in touch. You know, we know that less than a third of incidents of abuse with be it family violence or sexual violence are ever disclosed or reported. So, you know, that first step is huge. So the first thing we, we say to users um, in the kind of content model is like, thank you. And this is taking back control. It is the first step. Um, and then it's about providing options because particularly considering diversity and the intersectional nature of violence, um, it's not the same for everyone. It's not the same for every woman or um, man or um, gender diverse person. So making sure that people have options where they feel like their circumstances are heard and relevant. And it's not a, um, I guess the philosophy has really been about working from the outside in, which is why we started with SMS for connectivity issues. I mean, it is slower and has its own um, slew of issues. 
but yeah, we're we're trying to make sure that it's that the other, that we're not othering our uh, users. Othering is a, a really good uh, way to, to phrase that. Um, yeah, has there been any um, any other pushback about like um, are your you're trying to dehumanize it all, or um, is there any challenges people are having with it that you're you're forced to overcome? Um, I've actually been surprised. It hasn't been there hasn't been much at the very start before the product launched. Um, I guess there was a bit of pushback from the sector just because traditionally it is in a sector that's had a lot of technology investment. So building people's literacy in kind of trying to get them to feel confident that we're not trying to replace counsellors. It's literally just helping people make that first step. And so they feel they're a little bit further down the inf information funnel when they arrive to want like face-to-face -face counselling or whatever other support service or going to court, or whatever it is. So um, once the sector, and this is the prevention of violence sector and community health sectors, um, once they got a bit more comfortable with understanding it, they, they could see its benefits for their work as well because, I mean, it, the, it's an area that has such a high demand. Like even though there's so much non-disclosure, this the sector is swamped with the people who are seeking support. So it, it's a huge issue. It's a huge problem. And even in Australia, you know, the National Helpline for... Um, 1800 respect still has can have 10 to 15 minute wait times to get through so yeah it's there's lots of challenges so i think people are starting to get their heads around what we're trying to do right that sounds like a huge opportunity um and that's the challenges that there are sorry that's the reality is that there are um increasing problems and we're still only hearing about a third of them as you said and and uh, and we just don't have the people to 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 support it. So I think having a, it's definitely better to be chatting via text and at least having something that's going to respond there um, it, better than actually just a, a, wait, a waiting signal. So that's great. Um, what's what's coming up next for you? Like what's, what does the next year look like for Halakas? Um, well, we're just finalising the paperwork now to become a fully registered not-for-profit. So that's... Uh, exciting so it's kind of a mad fundraising dash for the next three months to make sure we can keep the lights on I mean fortunately it, it is a huge investment to keep it going um, you know just the running cost so that's pretty good but yeah well, as, as I said earlier like it's only Victoria at the moment so we're looking to expand to the other states and then also um, ensure that we can have it available in other languages so we've got the infrastructure there we're just waiting to kind of get some funding in the banks so we can pay for translations and spe culturally specific content creation. So, it, no, nothing, nothing huge. <laughs> okay. That's great. Um, well, I, I'm very happy to support you on that. I know there's some um, great people um, at a few levels that who could be um, really, really interesting for you to, uh, to chat to. So, um, yeah, very happy to support you on, on, on that. Um, Thank you. Uh, are there other areas that you think are, are opportunities to, to bring into like uh, into the the work you're doing, whether it's uh, robotics or AR, VR, or you know, are, are there are there other future technologies you think are going to play a role here? Um, I think you know, I'd like something that uh, I'd like um, we'll be working on the next little while is um, seeing how we can uh, create HelloCast. In a, in a form in like a no connectivity environment so looking at emergency settlements and kind of in that refugee context because mm -hmm. I think it's a really helpful messaging platform so um, yeah just doing some ex like local network experiments so that's that's one thing okay. um, and um, otherwise I haven't to be honest I haven't really thought too much about other kind of more high-tech um, opportunities the, the nature of the product has ended up being you know I'd love to get more AI in there I'd love to get more se um, sentiment detection and but you know we just need to really build up our database for that so um, yeah I mean I think the nature of it has been like kind of lo-fi technology um, as accessible as possible and and try to be really clever I guess and now I, I you know it's like an elegant solution <laughs> 
Sure. Um, with no bells and whistles, but yeah. Well, that's great. I think that's that's the right way to do an MVP. Um, you're measuring the, the numbers and, and getting uh, engagement uh, early on, and then knowing what to build. So I think that's a, that's the that's a great approach. Um, and you've got a, a, I think starting with SMS is is a great idea because it's very it is very accessible. It is very flexible, um, and I think people are very comfortable with it. I think which is very important. But it, it allows both mobility and privacy uh, and scalability. So um, yeah, I really hope that you can have to take that opportunity to, to expand out. Uh, if people watching this video um, would like to help in some way or participate or uh, do, you, do you take sponsorship or donations like, or are there other, other groups that you suggest people can support? Sure. Um, I completely forgot this video would be recorded. <laughs> so apologies to people watching it for whatever weird facial expressions I was pulling. Perfect. Um, Perfectly natural. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we have a Patreon account set up, so it's just at uh, hellocast.com.au and you can kind of find our Patreon account from there. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, you know, if, if that's something you want to support, that would be amazing. If not, um, local services in your area, you know, it's really hard for these organisations to they compete for funding, which isn't great, um, and they do rely on... Um, local community members wanting to support them. So if you don't, if it's not ColorCast, please consider supporting your local family violence and prevention of violence against women organisation. That's fantastic. Um, and are there any um, uh, mentors or supporters that you'd like to give a shout out to who have been uh, helpful to getting you going? Absolutely. So Claire Beach Harding uh, has been um, amazing in keeping me sane over the last uh, 18 months. So thank you very much to Claire. Um, and, you know, I have to say my mum and dad, I've got new mentors starting and they're, they're doing really well, but my mum and dad have been incredibly helpful um, and supportive. And I'll be really frank, it helped me pay the bills when I had sunk all the money into cash and it didn't look like any, any other funding was coming my way. So, yeah, big thanks to Laurie and Frank Costa. Oh, that's wonderful. Well done. I, my parents invested in my first startup when I was very, very, very young. Um, and, you know, I certainly wouldn't be here without support. So um, big thanks to the mums and dads for, for those like us who are lucky enough to have that kind of support. I um, know that not everybody, everybody does, but it'll uh, be great that you've been able to um, to get that support. So, well, that's fantastic. Look, Emma, great to chat to you today. And again, a, 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 an amazing mission, really, really important combination of um, technology to solve important human problems. Um, well done for the mission and the progress so far. I really hope we can help you progress that out. Um, I hope um, we can... Um, do, a quick question. Do you have any um, female engineers on your team yet? Not yet. And Not I yet. am looking. Excellent. I am looking. So, yeah. yeah Thank I'm, you for I'm, asking. I'm stating right now that Emma is hiring women engineers, uh, engineers uh, from uh, minority groups. Uh, please get in touch with Emma. I'm sure she'd love to have that diversity. Um, it was great to see some some uh, more um, good stories being shared around the the, uh, the web today around um, diversity etc. But so much more work to be done in in so many different areas. But thank you for your support of She's Building a Robot um, and, and for doing this interview. Um, and hopefully we can get this out and get some um, some more supporting for Hello Cast. So Emma, great to chat to you. Thank you so much for chatting today and um, and good luck with the the organisation as it grows. Thanks so much, Mick, and thanks to your uh, viewers and listeners. And I am sorry about the portrait format of the video and, and background noise. <laughs> Thank you. Entrepreneurs have to, do, have to do what they need to do, especially social impact entrepreneurs. So we know, you, know you're really busy. Thanks for taking some time out to share your story. Uh, and again, keep going. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot.